Imagine a vast expanse of sea, ships bristling with cannons, and a battle plan so audacious it would make even the bravest hearts skip a beat. The British and French naval forces clashed in a symphony of chaos and determination, each side vying for dominance with every cannon blast and strategic maneuver. Yup, it's all about the Battle of Taranto. So let's dive into one of the most thrilling naval battles in history. With the establishment of Mussolini's dictatorship in 1925, it became apparent to the British Empire that Italy had the potential to become an adversary in the foreseeable future. Both Italy and Great Britain had interests and presence in North Africa. Even before the outbreak of the Second World War, it was evident to a few far-sighted individuals that the two nations would need to use the Mediterranean Sea to resupply their forces in North Africa. To compound this, the Mediterranean was the gateway to Egypt and the Suez Canal, which in turn led to India and the Far East. Whilst the Royal Navy had a clear numerical advantage over the Italian fleet, it was also spread across a far greater area, making the Italian Regia Marina more of a threat in the Mediterranean where it enjoyed a local advantage in strength. As early as 1935, the key Italian port of Taranto was marked out as a target. By the summer of 1940, Britain and Italy had already clashed at sea, on land, and in the air. The Italian involvement in the Battle of Britain had been nothing short of a disaster, Italy's first offensive in the deserts of North Africa amounted to very little, and after the battleship Giulio Cesare sustained a single hit from HMS War Spite, the Italian fleet had made no further serious attempts to engage in open battle. However, Italy's supply route to North Africa was considerably easier than Britain's respective route to their forces in Egypt. Following the early losses of HMS Courageous and Glorious, there were also concerns within the British Admiralty of the vulnerability of their carriers to Axis forces. As a result, the decision was taken to make every endeavor to achieve naval superiority in the Mediterranean, and the plans for an attack on Taranto were revisited. The Battle of Taranto took place on the night of November 11th and 12th, 1940, during the Second World War, between British naval forces under Admiral Andrew Cunningham and Italian naval forces under Admiral Inigo Campioni. The Royal Navy launched 21 obsolescent ferry swordfish biplane torpedo bombers from the aircraft carrier HMS Illustrious against the Italian fleet anchored at Taranto. It was history's first naval engagement that relied upon carrier aircraft to attack heavily defended warships and was a defining moment of the Royal Navy's fleet air arm. Plans for attacking the Italian fleet in Taranto, which was well positioned to move out and engage British lines across the Mediterranean, had been mulled by the Royal Navy for years before the outbreak of World War II. The most promising plan, codenamed Operation Judgment, called for an attack by torpedo bombers launched from an aircraft carrier. The Italian ships anchored in Taranto were protected by torpedo nets, surrounded by barrage balloons and anti-aircraft guns, and thought they were immune. In the days preceding the attack, RAF photo reconnaissance confirmed the presence of the Italian fleet in Taranto and identified the various ships' locations, especially the battleships. Final plans were then formed and a strike force prepared. The first wave of ferry swordfish biplanes, led by Lieutenant Commander K. Williamson RN of 815 Squadron, left illustrious just before 2100 hours on November 11, 1940, followed by a second wave of nine about 90 minutes later. Of the second wave, one aircraft turned back with a problem with its auxiliary fuel tank, and one launched 20 minutes late after requiring emergency repairs to damage following a minor taxiing accident, so only eight made it to the target. The first wave, which consisted of six swordfish armed with torpedoes, two with flares and four 110kg bombs, and four with six bombs, was split into two sections when three of the bombers and one torpedo bomber strayed from the main force while flying through thin clouds. 
The smaller group continued to Toronto independently. The main group approached the harbor at Mar Grande at 22.58. Sixteen flares were dropped east of the harbor, and then the flare dropper and another aircraft made a dive bombing attack to set fire to oil tanks. The next three aircraft attacked over San Pietro Island and struck the battleship Conte di Cavour with a torpedo that blasted an 8.2 meter hole in her side below her waterline. Williamson's plane was immediately shot down by the Italian battleship's anti-aircraft guns. The two remaining aircraft in this subflight continued, dodging barrage balloons and receiving heavy anti-aircraft fire from the Italian warships and shore batteries to press home an unsuccessful attack on the battleship Andrea Doria. The next subflight of three attacked from a more northerly direction, attacking the battleship Littorio, hitting it with two torpedoes and launching one torpedo at the flagship, the battleship Vittorio Veneto, which missed. The bomber force led by Captain O. Patch RM attacked next. They found the targets difficult to identify, but attacked and hit two cruisers moored at Mar Piccolo, hitting both with a single bomb each from 1,500 feet, followed by another aircraft which straddled four destroyers. In the second wave of eight aircraft, nine were lined up on deck, but numbers eight and nine collided while preparing to launch. One took off but had to abort when an auxiliary fuel tank fell off in flight. Meanwhile, the other was repaired and launched late. This group, led by Lieutenant Commander J.W. Hale of 819 Squadron, was now approaching from a northerly direction toward the Mar Grande Harbor, with two of the four bombers also carrying flares, the remaining five carrying torpedoes. Flares were dropped shortly before midnight. Two aircraft aimed their torpedoes at Littorio, one of which hit. One aircraft, despite having been hit twice by anti-aircraft fire, aimed a torpedo at Vittorio Veneto, but the torpedo missed. Another aircraft hit the battleship Caio Giulio with a torpedo, blowing a large hole in her hull and flooding both of her forward magazines. The aircraft flown by Lieutenant GWLA Bailey RN was shot down by anti-aircraft fire from the heavy cruiser Gorizia following the successful attack on Litorio, the only aircraft lost lost from the second wave. The final aircraft to arrive on the scene 15 minutes behind the others made an unsuccessful dive bombing attack on one of the Italian cruisers despite the heavy anti-aircraft fire, then safely returned to illustrious landing at 2.39. In under two hours, the biplanes had struck three battleships and several cruisers and severely damaged the port's installations for the loss of two planes and four crewmen. The Italian battleships had suffered significant damage. Conte di Cavour had a hole measuring 39 by 25 feet in her hull, and permission to ground her was withheld until it was too late, so her keel touched the bottom at a deeper depth than intended. Some 27 of the ship's crew had been killed, and more than 100 others wounded. The ship was still undergoing repairs when Italy surrendered in September 1943, so she never returned to full service. Caio Giulio had only a slightly smaller hole, measuring 36 by 23 feet in her hull and was saved by being run aground. Littorio had considerable flooding caused by three torpedo hits. Despite underwater protection, the damage was extensive, although real damage to the ship's structures was relatively limited and the machinery was intact. Her casualties were 32 men killed and many wounded. She was holed in three places, once on the port side measuring 23 feet by 4 feet 11 inches, and twice on the starboard side measuring 49 by 33 feet and 39 by 30 feet. She too was saved by being run aground. Despite this, in the morning the ship's bows were totally submerged. It was a raid that revolutionized warfare and changed the course of history by ushering in the ascendancy of naval aviation and the aircraft carrier over battleships. Other navies took a keen interest in what the British had done at Toronto, and Japanese observers of the Imperial Fleet in particular paid close attention. U.S. Navy observers unfortunately did not, to America's detriment a year later at Pearl Harbor. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more Battlefield contents. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring the world around you. See ya! Bye!